Hello viewers and learners of the MEVE001 Environmental Impact Assessment for Environmental Health. I introduce myself as Dr. Sushmita Baska, working in the discipline of Environmental Studies at the School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies, Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. The topic of discussion for today is Prediction and Assessment of Impact on the Cultural and the Social Environment. So the learning modules will include the prediction and assessment of the impacts on the cultural and socio-economic environment. Let us see in the following slides how this is very important. Now let us discuss first with a case study, the social impact of the Sardar Sarovar scheme in India. The Sardar Sarovar scheme, this became the focus of debate in India and internationally on how to balance the economic development on one hand and human rights and environmental protection on the other. The environmental and social impact is immense. Uh, almost a lakh people were affected and uh, in several hundred villages were affected by the submergence. So most of the displaced people, almost from uh, you know, more than hundreds of villages, they were tribals who had no formal title to the land that they occupied and they were considered as encroachers and not entitled to even any resettlement. So this was non-compliant with the recognized norms of the human rights and in addition, a number of issues related to the environmental impacts of the scheme were unresolved and questioned and the assumptions used in the project design and mitigation were also questioned. Environmental impact assessments were implemented as early as 1960s in many countries. However, in India, it was implemented for the River Valley project in the year 1978 to 79 and later the other developmental sectors like industries, the thermal power plants, mining schemes were included. EIA has been made mandatory for 29 development categories under the Environmental Protection Act of 1986 and before the commencement of any developmental project, a complete assessment of the environmental effect has to be carried out. So a synthetics drugs plant, this was established near the river Musi at Hyderabad. At the time of establishment, it was outside the city limit. Other small scale industries were set up around the facility to cater to its needs. However, the small scale industries started polluting the river by discharging the untreated effluents into it. And after a few years, the city limit was increased to include this area. A residential area mushroomed around the facility. The air and the water pollution in the area also started affecting the people. So this case study highlights the need for proper siting of industries, urban planning to be taken into consideration, long term goals for the city advancement. Therefore, zoning of the areas is necessary so that the health of the people and the natural ecosystem is protected. From this case study, it is evident that the proper guidelines are needed for developmental processes and the setting up of the industries. What are the social impacts? So the Inter-Organizational Committee on Guidelines and Principles for Social Assessment in 1994, they defined the social impacts as the consequences to human population of any private or public action that alter the ways in which people live, work, play, relate to one another, organize to meet their needs and generally cope as members of the society. Therefore, social impacts are the people impacts of the developmental actions. Social impact assessment focus on the human dimensions of environments and seek to identify the impacts on people who benefit and who lose. Therefore, SIA can help to ensure the needs and voices of the diverse groups and people in a community who are taken into account. Now here, these are some projects with a significant socio-economic impacts. For example, the type of project, even if it's a construction project or a river valley project. So the landfill and hazardous waste disposal sites, the social impact would be health risk, loss of amenities, power in industrial plants. There can be community stress from the influx of the workforce, pressure on the infrastructure, dams and reservoirs, lifestyle disruption resulting from uh, uh, relocation, the land use alteration or the la uh, long lead time to fulfill the uh, impoundment and uh, the road and the linear developments, dislocation of the activity networks and the relationships. Let us now classify the social impacts. So we can be classified into five categories, lifestyle impacts on the way people behave and relate to the family, friends and cohorts on a day to day basis, cultural impacts on shared customs, obligations, values, re language, the religious belief and other elements which make a social or ethnic group distinct. Community impact on infrastructure, services, a voluntary organization, on the activity networks and cohesion. 
the quality of life impacts on sense of the place, aesthetics and heritage, perception of belonging, security and livability and aspirations for the future. Health impacts on mental, physical and social well-being, although these aspects are also the subject of health impact assessment. So what do we mean by the social impact assessment? It can be defined as uh, in terms of efforts to assess or estimate in advance the social consequences that are likely to follow specific policy actions including programs, projects and the adoption of new policies and specific government actions. So it is a process that provides a framework for prioritizing, gathering, analyzing and incorporating the social information and participating into the design and delivery of the developmental interventions. It ensures the developmental interventions are informed and taken into account the key relevant social issues and incorporate a participation strategy for involving a wide range of stakeholders. Social assessment on the other hand, this is a process that provides framework for prioritizing, gathering, analyzing and incorporating the social information and participation into the design and the uh, delivery of the development operations. So the uh, questions that are included in the impact assessment uh, process, that includes the impact definition, the direction of the impact, what are the potential socio-economic and cultural impacts of the proposed development, that will be the impact definition. The direction is, is this going to be adverse or beneficial? Does the impact direct shift between different groups and subpopulations? Do some benefit while others don't? Are the trade-offs between the potential adverse impacts and potential benefit impacts acceptable? Then the causes. How could the proposed development cause socio-economic impact? The impact attribution. How will the proposed development create new impacts or accelerate, exacerbate existing impacts? And how responsible could the proposed development be for causing an impact? Then the impact scope and the scale. Which population and communities will the proposed development most likely be impacted? How far and wide geographically could the individuals and communities feel the impacts of the proposed development? Impact manageability. Will the impact support or undermine the affected communities' aspirations and goals? Will the impacts cause unmanageable change for a community? How resilient are the potentially affected communities? How vulnerable they are to these adverse impacts? The impact significance. Are the potential impacts likely adverse or are they significant? Then is mitigation available to manage, reduce or eliminate the potential impacts? Then impact mitigation and monitoring. Are there existing mitigation measures that have worked for these types of impacts? If so, how can we use them? How can we track the accuracy of our predictions and use the adaptive management to alter the mitigation if required? Therefore, SIA is a process of analyzing the impact of public and government intervention on the social aspects of the human environment. These aspects include the ways people cope with life through their economy, social systems and cultural values. The ways people use the natural environment for subsistence, for their recreation, for their spiritual activities, cultural activities and so on. The ways people use the environment for shelter, for their livelihoods, for industry, for workshop or for their worship, recreation, gathering together during functions or events and so on. Organization of the community, social and cultural institutions and their beliefs, preservation of the community identity, art, music, dance, the language arts, craft and other exp expressive aspects of the culture are important. A group's values and beliefs about appropriate ways to live family and extra family relationships, the status relationships, means of expression and other expressions of a community, the aesthetic and cultural character of a community or neighborhood and its ambience. So SIA essentially involves characterizing the existing state of such aspects, forecasting how they may change even if a given action or alternative is implemented and developed and developing means of mitigating the changes that are likely to be adverse from the point of view of an affected population. Now this flow chart shows you an impact value chain. You have the input, the activities that are involved and the outputs, the results that are measured, the outcomes that may be with intervention or without any intervention. The goal alignment is important, the alignment of outcome with intended growth. So the output could be of any measurable result from an organization's activity, for example, units of housing, number of people placed into employment, 
number of youth served and so on. The outcome would be the specific changes in attitude, behaviors, knowledge, skill, status, the level of functioning that result from enterprise activities such as finding a job, avoid getting sick, reducing emissions by a certain amount. The SIA uses any of the tools of social science, program evaluation or business practice to determine the social outputs, outcomes or impact of an intervention program, organization or a company. Many a times these make use of the workshop based methods and particularly the participatory assessment methods. The major advantage of ad undertaking such uh, SIA, a systematic SIA is identifying the project program stakeholders, identifying and prioritizing the social issues associated with the project and mitigating the negative impacts on communities or on individuals. The enhanced benefits to be given to those affected, avoid delays and obstruction in gaining developmental approval and act as a precautionary measure and avoid costly error in the future, build the trust and cooperation between community and stakeholders that is necessary for successful implementation of the project. The social impact assessment process. So it is for ensuring that development activities are informed and they take into account the key relevant social issues and formulate the mitigative measures and incorporate a strategy for participation of wide range of stakeholders. Social assessment is an iterative process that has to be organized in a phased manner in several stages and it follows a process of an SIA similar to the EIA process although the major steps are involved followed are logically sequential they sometimes overlap in their practice. So these are the stages that are done in an SIA. According to the Inter-Organizational Committee on the Guidelines and Principles for SIA, the SIA involves undertaking the various actions in the following major stages. Public participation, developing and implementing an effective public participation and to involve all those who are interested and the affected stakeholders. That is the first step to be taken. So uh, it will involve identifying the client population that will benefit or will be adversely affected by the project. The identification of the alternatives. It involves describing the proposed action and reasonable alternatives to do it including the no action alternative. During this stage, the proposed action should be described in detail so as to identify the data requirements needed for the proponent to do a preliminary assessment. Profile of a baseline condition. So they need to document the relevant human environment, area of influence of the project and the existing social conditions and trends. Baseline simply means geographical and timeline to start the assessment. Social impact assessment, they can be performed to get an overview of the social issues which are associated with the project in terms of some of the parameters. Demographic factors like the age of the people, number of people there, the location, the population density of the area and so on. Socio-economic determinants like the factors affecting their income, their productivity, their risk aversion of the poorest groups, land tenure, access to uh, the productive inputs and markets, family composition, kinship reciprocity and so on. The social organization that is the organization and capacity at the household and community levels affecting participation in the local level institutions as well as to services and information. Socio-political context implementing agencies the development goals, priorities and commitment to project objectives, control over resources, experience and relationship with other stakeholder groups, the needs and values, stakeholder attitudes and the values determining whether the development interventions are needed and wanted, appropriate incentives for change and capacity of stakeholders to manage the process of change. Scoping of the impacts. This essentially involves identification and prioritization of the range of likely social impacts through a variety of the means and that would be by discussion or interviews with members of all those who are affected. And the methods that are used are normally those that are existing in the social science literature, public scoping, public surveys and public participation techniques. There are also certain workshop based methods and the participatory assessment methods. In the workshop based method, collaborative decision making takes place in context of the stakeholder workshops which bring stakeholders together to assess the issues and design development projects collaboratively. In the participatory method, social assessment can be informed by field visit to communities and other local level stakeholder to learn about their perspectives and the priorities. Identification and analysis of the estimated effects. This involves analyzing and predicting the probable impacts of the proposed project and alternatives against the baseline condition with, without, with and without an any action. 
So this involves investigating the probable social impacts in terms of predicted conditions without the actions, baseline condition and predicted conditions and with the actions and predicted impacts. Investigation of the probable impacts involves five major sources of information. Detailed data from the sponsoring agency on the proposed action, record of previous experience with similar action, census and vital characteristics, documents and secondary sources, field research including informant interviews, hearings, group meetings and funds are available, surveys of the general population. The methods of predicting the future impacts are at the heart of the SIA process. So the care must be taken to ensure the quality and transparency of the methods and data and to provide for the critical review. Some of those which are important for analyzing are given below. The population multiplier methods. So here each specified increase in population implies the designated multiplies of other variables such as jobs, housing units and other infrastructure needs. Statistical significance. This involves calculations to determine the probabilistic differences between with and without the proposed action. Scenarios. These refer to logical imaginations based on construction of hypothetical uh, futures through a process of mentally modeling and the assumptions through the SIA variables in a question. Consulting experts. So use of expert knowledge such as researchers, professional consultants, Local authorities or knowledgeable citizens are important. Calculation of the futures foregone. A number of methods have been formulated to determine what options would be given up irrevocably as a result of a plan or a project. Prediction and evaluation of responses to impacts. So this is made to determine the significance of the identified impact to those who will be affected. Projecting the impacts through analysis is important and it is a difficult task but then it will have high Therefore, projecting the impacts through analysis is an important and also a difficult task but the response of the affected parties frequently will have higher order significance impacts. After the direct impacts have been estimated, the assessor must next estimate how the affected public would respond in altitude and actions, in attitude and in actions. The indirect and the cumulative impact. So secondary or indirect impact are those caused by primary and the direct impact and they must occur later both in time and geographic distance than the primary impacts. The cumulative impacts are those resulting from the incremental impacts of an action added to other past, present and reasonably foreseeable future actions regardless of which agency or person undertakes them. Evaluation of alternatives and impact mitigation. This involves evaluating the alternatives in terms of projection of their consequences for affected and interested stakeholders. So each of these or even a modification is proposed to the action then that also has to be assessed separately and subsequently a mitigation plan will have to be developed and implemented in order for the preference to firstly avoid, secondly minimize and thirdly compensate for the adverse impacts. Monitoring plan. This involves developing and implementing a monitoring program to identify the deviations from the proposed action and any important unanticipated impacts. This should track project and program development and compare the real impacts with the projected ones. The principles of the social impact assessment are involve the diverse public, analyze impact equity, focus the assessment, identify the methods and assumptions and define significance, provide feedback on social impacts to project planners, use SIA practitioners, establish monitoring and mitigation programs, identify the data sources plan for gaps in data. So dear learners and viewers, in this lecture we discussed about the uh, socio-economic impacts and their prediction on the you know the socio-economic conditions and the uh, cultural requirements and we have seen some principles of the socio-impact assessment, how these methodologies are performed and why it is important to conduct the same. We have also given you certain flowcharts for easy understanding and some tables also where the different impacts and the questions have been put in mind and uh, how the mitigation and the prevention and the awareness among the public can also be done. I hope you have had a good understanding and thank you for your patient listening.